I was very kindly invited to, to share with you some of uh, um, the ideas, some of the concerns uh, um, coming from my experience. I've been working on climate policy for more than 10 years with different levels of responsibility. And as uh, Jose Luis said, uh, um, in the last four years, I was the Secretary of State for Climate and um, Environment. So I am one of those final users that depends very much on sound information in order to take reasonable, sound, robust decisions, which is not an always, and which is not always an easy, an easy task. In fact, um, I will try to do it in a very basic uh, way, so to, to understand what is the way of reasoning and what are my personal views on what we need to strengthen. When um, I started to, to work on this, one of the first things I learned is that uh, climate is a very young discipline compared to many other disciplines. Climate knowledge, climate science. And um, even in, in that circumstance, there has been a very strong, relevant, recent proliferation of robust science on climate, which is already a relevant indicator on the interest from science community to invest on better knowledge from many different perspectives on what is happening with climate. It's true that um, due to its uh, young, uh, recent uh, years uh, dedicated uh, from, from the academia and for many other reasons for its complicated uh, complications uh, that are part of the climate system, um, there can be many uncertainties that uh, will certainly require further research. But there are some clear certainties that allow us to think that uh, we are facing a sort of global security challenge. It's not only environmental, technological, or a very basic science challenge. It is a global security challenge that we are placing, facing. Some of the um, uncertainties, with certain degree of uncertainty, each of them, could require much more information. We could uh, think on the need to improve knowledge on the concrete sequence for the behavior uh, of the atmosphere along the years and depending on the carbon concentration, we should develop capacities to assess uh, the potential local impacts of a climate change. We should build additional knowledge on relevant areas of impacts in complex systems such as oceans, the way you have been commenting on. We know that there are many things that um, are quite uncertain and will have a great impact on the level of probability of many of the concrete conclusions, such as the demography trends, the energy models, the energy consumption, the technology evolution, both in the learning curves, in the technology breakthroughs, how the economies behave, how the industrial trends go on, and what type of activities in land use, land use change and forestry are going to take place in the years to come. And at the same time, we have some very clear certainties that should be always in the middle of our uh, way of thinking. First, we realize that higher carbon concentrations interfere in a serious manner on climate patterns. Second, there is um, a clear message coming from different observers. Certain highly spread human activities are behind the origin of irrelevant carbon emissions along the last decades. And third, 
there has, an, um, there has been an unprecedented increase of carbon concentrations up to 400 ppm, while historic range were between 180 and 280, more or less, no? we have been commenting on that. So it is important to be very serious on what the models say towards the future and how we react right now. Even these um, climate scenarios families managed by the IPCC in 2007, being based on relevant information up to that moment, seem to be a little bit updated. And other relevant people assessing potential emission trends show that uh, we could be facing already a scenario of an increase of global average temperature between 4 and 6 degrees unless we react in a very aggressive manner against this evolution. So the most relevant question is what is the magnitude of the risk we collectively are ready to support? And how much of this uh, risk we are ready to fight against? The main conclusion could be that something which has always been the uh, relevant uh, elements surrounding environment activities and environment economies and environment science that by definition was a strategic mid and long term perspective is not anymore a mid and long term problem. Short termism has become a real issue for environment science, for environment economy, and for policy decisions dealing with these topics. Otherwise, we will really be locked in a different climate scenario. This is, this is why, uh, even if uh, there is a huge need for additional research, the main message should be to readdress priority challenges and to be fighting against the challenges. Three areas of work. First, as commented, better knowledge for sound decisions. Still much to do. Second, urgent and sufficient reaction. The trends are clear enough to have overcome the threshold of the scientific interest. It is not anymore only scientific interest. It is a huge need for additional work. And the third main challenge could be to improve the capacities to communicate the message so that we get a better understanding of risk and the required action by general public. Otherwise, it will be much difficult to react at the speed it is required. On the first big chapter, no more. Of course, we need to understand the past, crucial. Then we have to strengthen our observation systems and observation plans so that um, we need to follow very carefully parameters such as the atmosphere, behavior, soils, biodiversity, water, both inland water, oceans, ice surface, and glaciers. We need to, to, to face, to, to, to design, to shape these observation systems, these observation plans in a very strategic manner that takes into account that the information cannot be anymore uh, owned in small bases, in the small boxes, sorry. We need to share information, to work in a system that it works like a networking system. We need multidisciplinary approaches to understand and to interpret how these things work on. And we need to keep on investing into these observation systems. Here, still a warning maybe due to the economic crisis, we are witnessing slowdown in the investment on the satellital uh, observation systems, not to talk about other observation uh, uh, fields, much more complicated as oceans. But it is also a very good opportunity for international cooperation. Science, policy action, 
social behavior needs to make a link with um, some of the elements that coordinate our action worldwide. And a very relevant commitment ratified by all the governments under the United Nations Framework for Climate Change Convention is to cooperate to understand how climate works and to promote preventive adaptation and the support for those who are much more vulnerable. So, observation systems, the understanding of climate could be the very first important step to help in an international action, an international field in this context. Then we need to implement or to strengthen the early warning systems in two different ways. Probably the most immediate is the early warning systems to avoid, to be ready for the increase of external weather events. Something which is very simple, but that can save many lives. And as Tim Lenton has been commenting on, we should also be able to understand what type of tipping points could be relevant to develop this early warning system for climate change, for other type of parameters which are much more substantial in the mid and long term. Finally, we need to develop our modeling and projections to be able to interpret, to say in advance what can be the risk into the future. Dealing with the second challenge, further action, urgent further action, where I have just said that short term drives us into an immediate urgent reaction, both to reduce emission much more that, than what we have already said to do, and to be able to be ready for what it is going to happen. You have to, you, many, many of you could remember that uh, the uh, level of risk the international community has said to be ready to accept is an increase of global temperature than, that is not higher than two degrees Celsius. Well, even under those circumstances, there is a still a big gap to be filled in. And as Ignacio said a few minutes before, we are already being locked in a future that it is going to be much more costly to avoid in case we want to react from now to some years later. So this, this is going to require the development of additional knowledge and demonstration and deployment of new technologies in many fields. Of course, in energy, with some technological breakthroughs being required for things like transport emissions or the generalization of other types of uh, free carbon generation of power. We need to understand also in the economic and social fields how finance, how economic tools can give the right signals to generalize a different model of development. Taxation, fiscal options, etc. We need to develop adaptation policies, how to make a much more intelligent use of water, how water interlinks with many other fields of biodiversity and soils, even climate system, to what extent is it possible to adapt in the different sectors. We could find many different answers depending on what we are talking about. What is the room for international cooperation in this field, both in knowledge, in research and implementation? If we can make a use or something similar to what we have called the environmental impact assessment methodologies. So to use some reference to develop a climate proof and carbon neutral conditionalization of every single decision. And the third challenge could be the communication of knowledge. Why there have been other fields where it has been easier to be understood by politicians, by public opinion, that there was a huge need for a huge change. Of course, we know about the, the inertia, the difficulties to change 
the big parameters. But at the same time, the fact that we are talking about such a complex and multi-sectoral uh, problem makes us to try to strive our efforts to communicate in terms that it can be understood what we are playing with and what could be the cost in, in case of lack of sufficient action. Here it is where the main message should be that the need for consistency, that there is a need for cons consistency between the short and the mid and long term, stressing that um, it is only possible to count on a mid and long term in case the short term decisions are the adequate ones. In this um, effort of communication, there are some lessons that could draw from what it has been the work of the IPCC. The IPCC, or regional solutions, that tend to organize information in a manner that final users can understand what are the main message. But, of course, we need to strengthen the capacity to, to control, to be sure that the simple silver bullet included in these bold messages are sound, are consistent, and people can trust them. This is a crucial field for you all who want to be researchers to work on science in the years to come. Science is one of the main fields where there is a strong credibility towards the public opinion, towards the society in general. So to invest some part of your time also trying to communicate in an easier manner the main points of concern from your disciplines could be key to succeed in this field. Thank you so much.